right from school my idea was that I, my my intention was to go into investment banking so i remember when i finished school i got a, a few opportunities to work in a number of banks and i actually said no i would not work in a bank because i had a, a view of they would take me to the banking hall and i'd never escape mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so i took my cv only to investment banks and thankfully i think it was there was a bit of divine intervention as well i got called by strategic uh, african securities that's sas mm -hmm. which at the time was very much into corporate finance they were the leaders in corporate finance and so that's why i say it was there was a bit of intervention from god because that's exactly what i wanted to do i wanted to do corporate finance and advisory so that's where i started off um I worked there for a number of years, I think three years or three and a half years or so. And then I worked at African Alliance. Now they are uh, your typical research house. So investment research uh, related to the Ghana Stock Exchange. Um, and really the reason why I took up that job was because I realized that I needed a bit more technical knowledge and that was going to give me that. Um, I worked there for a short period though, I think a year and a half or so, and then I got an opportunity to work at uh, uh, Investor Relations, um, actually at UT Bank, which now is, you know, when you say you worked at UT Bank, it's not such a great thing. But um, that job was extremely important in my career because it gave me the other side of an analyst. You know, so now when you're an analyst and you're assessing a company you are assessing it from an outsider's view but you never know the ins and outs of how they actually operate there's only a, a ceiling it's like an ocean you only have a view of the top mm -hmm. but you don't know what goes down that brings up the top so working there actually got me to understand business how businesses run and the my role as investor relations was really talking to the top um, equity investors and then the top debt holders so international debt so I did a lot of it was more of an almost an analyst role within the bank. Um, it was from there that I got this job, and I have to say that that was very instrumental to my being able to manage our finance. Because I, as I told you, Fortis investments currently are only financial services. Mm -hmm. So I know the opposite side. I understand what happens there, and so if I get a report, I'm not only looking at it on face level but i'm thinking about what is actually under all the numbers and figures that they've given me because i understand it from the uh, the opposite angle as well so really that's been my history okay so uh, in every successful person's life i know there are some few failures what what are some of the um, thoughts about failures that have wow failures hmm let me see have i ever had a massive failure well, I wouldn't. I don't think I've ever had a failure. I would, I've had challenges, which perhaps at the time seemed like failures. But then, as the pattern of life continues, you realize that it was not a failure because if you had been successful, your path would have been different, right? So, for example, um, whilst I was in Ashesi. Uh, I got the opportunity to work at Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, a summer internship at Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. And I, they were, it was a pilot. They were now looking at getting interns from Africa as well. And they had chosen Ashesi University to start that. And I was the first and only person to do that. Wow. You know, so I was the first person to go under this pilot. And I went there and didn't get the job. And I thought it was a failure, you know, because this was like, was I spoiling the whole thing by not getting the job? Did I just ruin the chance of everybody else who came because I didn't get a job, you know, after that internship? Because the way they do it is the internship is almost an assessment to get a job in Goldman Sachs, you know. And um, at that time, I did, did think it was a failure. It didn't spoil the program. They continued the program, you know. But uh, personally, I, I did take it as a failure at that point. But then looking back, I don't think, because especially since considering the department they started me off with, I know I would have been very unhappy because I was looking, at, as I told you, I've always wanted to do corporate finance advisory. Um, right now I'm into private equity. You know, it was, it was supposed to be corporate finance advisory, private equity. 
or corporate finance advisory consulting. Those were the two options, right? And I started off in a sales department. In your typical investment bank, you don't go from the sales department to investment banking. Mm -hmm. It's impossible, you know. If I'd started in sales, I'd have actually ended, I'd have stayed in sales or related, I, I would have just ruined my career path that I wanted. At that time, I was just looking at it, oh my goodness, Goldman Sachs, <laughs> you know, but not looking at it in terms of um, did it fit within my career goals. So I'm, hindsight, I'm actually glad that didn't work out. And it obviously didn't work out because it wasn't my strong point anyway. Mm -hmm. I wasn't working on something that was my strong point, you know. So, I mean, like, it's an amazing story. Everybody should be inspired by that. But uh, as we discuss with the face of girl empowered, we're trying to empower mm -hmm. young girls. Okay. Not to focus on graduating and getting a job, but starting okay. a business right from school. Mm -hmm. uh, with your experience, I mean, yes, you wanted to go into corporate financing, mm -hmm. but what advice would you have for young people, uh, participants of the girl empowered mm -hmm. uh, business pageant? Uh, to be able to keep the ideas and grow to become business that maybe they can also employ you one day to come and manage. You know, <laughs> um, I would say never think small, always think big, and always have the end in sight. You know, once and the end should always be something big. You know, never limit yourself. It should be a big goal. Nothing is impossible if you continue dreaming about it. I remember um, one of the things that has. Um, stories that has amazed me and uh, really is uh, my cousin told me this story about her friend so this is an actual uh, thing that happened it's not like a, a dreamed up story that you hear on the or see on the internet um, she, in she lives in London and she's an immigrant so uh, she'd been looking for a council house for a long time and being an immigrant already she was disadvantaged the chances that they were going to give her an old council house was very very high now she saw them building this new council building, you know, and when they build the new ones, they almost built them like luxury apartments. And every day she would stand in front of that one single house and say, thank you God for giving me that build, an apartment in that building. Do you know she actually got an apartment in that specific building? And she didn't even apply for that building. She applied generally and she got that specific building, you know. And it just shows you, you need to dream big because maybe if she had dreamed a little bigger, should have gotten something bigger, mm -hmm. you know. But dream big and work towards it. It's not dream big and sit in the house and dream, but dream big and work towards it. There's no limit to what hard work can can get you, you know. So well, one of the secret things that we had about our list is okay. everybody else on the list is CEO and MD. Okay. And you were the only vice president. Right. And yeah, because we thought that yes, you were doing other things that mm -hmm. really had a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. uh, from first group, definitely, I mean, if you're here for the next two years, I'm sure you become the president of the group. But beyond you this, be. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but but be, beyond first group, what are the next steps that you are maybe planning to take? Well, um, truthfully, I think uh, I still need to grow myself. Um, even uh, no matter where you are in life, even where you think you are, you reach the ceiling, there's still a step higher. You know, the clouds, there's still, when you're in a plane, there are clouds and there are clouds and there are clouds. Mm -hmm. And even if you go beyond the clouds, you're talking about galaxies. There's no limit to uh, really where you should be aiming for. Um, I would say that, yes, I would possibly be looking at a CEO position at some point. I'm not sure whether I would want to be CEO of first group. Um, but the, the possibilities are limitless, really. Awesome. So, uh, thank you very much for no this talk time. Thank you. Thank you for thank having you for us. Coming.